Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we go back a couple of weeks to Rob Tilbury's last pheasant day of the season and Byron reviews the Sarko Finfire Mark II. This is the last day of our shoot. Uh, it, the birds are starting to thin out a bit now. Um, it, we need a good team of beaters to get round them. Uh, but nevertheless, we're still hoping for a reasonable day uh, today, 75 birds or so. Um, it, we're looking forward to it. The weather forecast isn't very good. So, um, fingers crossed, um, a bit of snow forecast, so uh, we'll have to see what the weather throws at us. We're going to uh, shoot eight guns today. We'll move up three. Um, if you could pick up your cartridges off the pegs when you're finished, uh, that would be very, very helpful. And if you could refrain from shooting anything other than game birds until the game starts coming, because we've got a fair few partridges still about, and as soon as you fire the first shot, they're likely to be in the next county. So if you could do that, if you wouldn't mind. And if those were dogs, we've got a hell of a lot of pickers up today, it seems. I don't know where they've all come from. Um, just pick up after the drive. I think he's pulled that one out for you, Anthony. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this so is the peg. Well, what is it then? Six. Well, I've got five. I'm next to you. Oh, bloody hell, that's <laughs> not good, I wouldn't want to be five. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting his shoot in the door. He's a notorious poacher. No, he isn't. He knows something right. else about when you're Seven, okay. So, yeah. Well, I shoot him up the arse right. and he kills him. <laughs> so who's one and two? One. Okay. Two. Guns this way, if you would. Are you? Um, yeah, we're going to have a new gym. Yeah, we're going to have a new gym. I know. Thursday. I know. And then we... Right, we're at Steve Ashton. It's our last day of the season. We're, we're hoping for... If we can find the birds, um, 80, 80 or so birds. Uh, we've got an absolute army of beaters here today. Uh, this is a nice small drive, two acre cover crop, uh, small duck pond. Um, we, there'll be some partridge, pheasant, and a few teal, hopefully, off the pond. Uh, maybe a few mallard. It's a good one to kick off, really. Um, I've brought out the uh, Browning B525. Um, I like the way this one handles and uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to shooting this one. I shot it a few weeks ago and it was quite successful, so uh, I'll give it another outing. Uh, it's just starting to snow. We said we'd never predict what the weather was going to do today, and it's, uh, it's, it is snowing now. <laughs> Could be good for film. Let's hope it's good for the guns too. With the army of beaters, there shouldn't be a problem getting the birds to lift. The eight guns wait as the snow falls and the day gets off to a roaring start. The second larger drive should offer the guns more of a sporting chance. Oh, nice and done. Nice and done. A sudden flurry of birds takes the guns by surprise, breaking through the cover crop in a great flush. Rob stops to reload on the outskirts of the action on a distant peg, and the beaters send one or two skywards. All seems quiet until another head of pheasant gets up over the guns and the action starts all over again. Never a dull moment. Yeah. 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 
on yet. <laughs> The third drive sees a lot of sport for his neighbouring guns, but Rob only gets one or two chances. It's the way of the sport and he's not about to let dumb luck get him down. As enthusiastic as ever, Rob chooses to remain positive. Not in shooting on that drive, but the last drive was spectacular. Loads of birds in that and uh, we were just on the edge of things, but uh, had one or two. Um, plenty more drives to go. Uh, weather's brightened up, stop snowing, sun's out. Looking forward to the rest of the day. But first, the all-important mid-morning break. Um, it's nice to take a bit of a break for Elevensies, uh, drink some sausages and that. It's great. Um, chat, talk about the birds we've shot. Um, look forward to the uh, next drive. We've got a few duck on the next drive, so that'll be interesting. Um, and then the big drive this afternoon. After we've had a good lunch. <laughs> so uh, that's what it's all about, really. Uh, we've had some terrific days. I mean, we're normally aim we are aiming to shoot 100, and we've had 130 plus days. Um, we've had all sorts of weather, but we've still shot well. Um, everybody's had shooting. Um, it's been a very good year. I'd say the best year we've ever had. Um, and, it, and a lot of it, well, it's, it's down to the effort put in all through the year. And as soon as we've packed up, at the end of this season, we'll be looking at um, getting all the equipment in and cleaning it and then repairing and doing fencing and, and all the jobs. And it's a, it's a full year round job for everybody. Um, and we're very lucky we've got some very dedicated people uh, that, that do all the feeding and, and, and put all the hours in every day, a couple of hours every day. Even on a small farm shoot. And it, but it pays dividends, of course. Uh, Thank you very much to everyone. Even though the season is just about over, that doesn't mean the team get a break. Some mallard drop in for a spell and one of their number falls to the eager guns. I do hate to be number one gun. I hate to be proven right, but what a fantastic drive. It's just so many birds, but uh, you, you want to be further down the line, unfortunately. <laughs> It was great to watch. <laughs> Before long though, it's Rob's time to shine as he moves up the pegs and stands in a good position for some fine pheasant. That's got it. I hit it with the first, but the second one definitely got it. Good second shot, isn't it? Yeah, that's a long way up, isn't it? In the sun. About that. Well, that didn't quite uh, pat out how I expected. But uh, anyway, a couple of good birds, so uh, I'm very pleased. Yeah, I enjoyed that, that was good. Everyone lends a hand in the picking up, if they don't get bogged down in the thicket, that is. We're almost at the end of the season. Uh, the birds, we've thinned them out considerably. Uh, they're quite jumpy. It takes a bit more to get round them. So, we, and we've had a record season and record numbers on some of our days. So we're expecting a few less today, but you know, I reckon probably 75 we've shot today. We'll find out soon when everybody comes back, but uh, I've enjoyed it. I haven't been quite in the shooting today, but um, there again, last week, uh, I was right in the thick of it. So uh, it's the way things go. Um, 
but it's turned out really well considering the weather forecast um, a little bit of snow this morning but it's beautiful now um, we're really pleased I think with how things have gone this season beaters day uh, next week um, there's still a lot of birds left so I think we'll put on a really good show for the beaters next week um, they should have a a really enjoyable day, proper driven day for them as well, and I think that's important. A very pleasing bag for all concerned, and there's one last tradition of the shoot that needs to be addressed the best shot award. Uh, Dad, do you know who you're going to award the archer? Uh, Tell me you're going to come to in a minute. Um, yeah, okay. Right, okay then. Uh, I'd like to award the Archie Cup for best shot today. Um, it's the way, it's the yeah. quality, isn't it? Um, I'd like to award this to uh, Jim um, for his pheasant, um, which was an excellent bird, an excellent hen bird, wasn't it? So, um, well done, Jim. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we, normally get a, we normally get a picture, actually. It's a, it's a tradition down here. If you're a newcomer and you get the cup, you've got to buy everybody a bottle of pork. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, get a photo. Is that the time already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just get a photo. Yeah. 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 There's a proud man. Yeah. Rob there getting his money's worth out of the syndicate. And now, it's the shooting show news. This is the Shooting Show News. It's less than a week until the British Shooting Show. The biggest indoor shooting show the UK has seen, the Shooting Show takes place for the seventh time this weekend at Stony Park. We'll be there reporting on all the latest news and the hottest products. You can still buy advanced tickets until Thursday. Head to shootingshow.co.uk to get yours. We're into the final week of Sporting Rifle Magazine's auction to raise funds for Save the Rhino. The auction closes on Monday the 16th, and the Sporting Rifle team said they were hoping for a final push after the total pledged to pass the £10,000 mark last week. With all the money raised going to fund anti-poaching units in South Africa and Swaziland, every penny is important. Keep up with all the latest bids on the Sporting Rifle website. Just a week after Mark Windsor won a Range Rover in the Stratstone Ultimate One Challenge, there's another car up for grabs at Royal Berkshire Shooting School. The 11-week Handicap Classic has begun. It's a unique competition that applies a handicap system to put regular shooters on an even footing with the sports elite. We asked one enthusiastic competitor just why he enters the Handicap Classic year after year. They're hard. I mean, the course is quite tough. Some of the birds are teasing. They seem to be very easy and yet you can over-march and under-march and over the top, underneath, the usual stuff really. But it's a very nice layout. Keep up with all your competition news in Clay Shooting Magazine. There's good news for shooters in Europe as Norway rolled back its ban on lead shot after a decade. A parliamentary vote on repealing the Norwegian lead ban easily passed by 79 votes to 16. Norway's Hunters Association had been campaigning for repeal for years and managed to secure declarations of support from four of Norway's main political parties. In the UK, Basque welcomed the result. And finally, the Countryside Alliance award winners have been announced. Presented by Environment Secretary Liz Truss, the award saw Peelham Farm in Berwickshire win the second annual Clarissa Dixon Wright Award. Suffolk Food Hall won the local food award, Ludwell Stores was on top in the village store category, Park Hill Farm in Shropshire won the Enterprise Award, and Nolans of Kilcullen in County Kildare ensured that the traditional business award headed across the Irish Sea. It's the tenth time these awards, dubbed the Rural Oscars, have been handed out. That was the Shooting Show News. This week I bring to you a rifle which has been quite some time in the making. It's a little bit of a return to the past, but it's definitely a welcome addition to the market. I'm talking about the Seiko Finfire Mark II. Now, this little rimfire, uh, some of you may remember in its original version, and when it was discontinued, it was met with quite considerable sadness. Hunters out there and, and shooters who were really fond of the original Finfire wanted to see it back, and Seiko listened. The Seiko Finfire Mark II is out, and essentially it's just a throwback to the original model with minor modifications. But essentially we have the old Seiko uh, Finfire back and we've got a single caliber rifle in a format which arguably is one of the sweetest little rim fires now on the market. So what do we have in this rifle as a whole? Well, we have Seiko staying true to the original Seiko Finfire and that was a rimfire rifle 
that had a big rifle feel. And you can see just by looking at it that you know, it could almost pass itself off as a, a 2-2 Hornet. It just has that, uh, that shape and feel about it that makes you feel like you're actually handling a big rifle. Not the lightest rimfire on the market, but it's balanced well. It doesn't feel that heavy in the hand. The wood is fairly plain. Uh, it's nothing too fancy here. Remember, this is a workhorse. All rimfire rifles are workhorses, so it does the job. It's quite light on the on the checkering here at the front. I'm not not quite sure why it's not as as dark as the checkering on the pistol grip. In terms of comfort for handling, well, not a huge amount has changed. It's perfectly functional for the job at hand, and I really have no complaints there. Underneath the rifle, we've got the, the bottom assembly here, which uh, is an integral part of the trigger guard. Now this is actually made of plastic, just like the Seiko Quad. For me, this part of the assembly should be made of a, a light alloy of some description, but you know, Seiko have opted for this on both their models, and it seems to work. The trigger, as you can see in there, nicely shaped Seiko trigger blade. You know, Seiko triggers, in terms of factory triggers on the market, they do make some of the best. And the trigger on the Finfire is fully adjustable and is no exception. Real nice, clean, crisp break. The blade shape as well is ju just how I like it. Uh, a number of small ridges running the length of the blade, which also help just to, to aid a little bit of grip on your fingertips, especially useful in poor conditions. Magazine, that's sitting uh, just forward where you would expect it to be. It's released by this little synthetic lever here. Press that in and the magazine will pop out. There is no difference between this magazine and what you find in uh, the Seiko Quad. Plastic on the bottom, very light um, alloy sides to it and a plastic follower, straight stack just like many rimfire magazines. This is a five shot, of course you can also get the extended 10 shot as well. And that clips into there. I can't see it coming out uh, by mistake. You don't have to depress it very hard to get the magazine to drop out, but it's nicely recessed, so it's very unlikely you're gonna catch that and drop it in the field uh, unintentionally. If we go from the magazine back up to the, the meat of the rifle into the action, and there isn't a huge amount that's really new here. Most people will be familiar with what's going on if you know the Seiko rimfires. We've got a nice, uh, nicely shaped bolt, all made of metal, with the exception of a little um, synthetic insert inside. It's hollowed in here just for weight. It sits out from the rifle just about right. There's nothing worse than a bolt that sits too close to the stock, and that, of course, aids uh, very easy cycling and a major plus point for um, the, the Seiko Finfire is just how uh, shallow the throw is to, to drop the bolt back. And look at that, just there, real nice, firm, positive feel about cycling. To the rear of the bolt, we've got plastic bolt shroud at the back. It's an important part of the rifle. I like to see these in metal, but I've never heard of any issues on the Seiko rifles with those plastic bolt shrouds, so it's obviously not too much of an issue. Safety catch, exactly where you'd expect it to be. It's exactly where it is on all of Seiko's other rifles, so there's a great familiarity uh, with regard to that. Unlike um, their full bore rifles, this is only two position, so the bolt, uh, push down here, it's locked, pull it back, everything's locked up. Push it forward and you can, if I am a little bit careful, you can do it very quietly indeed. There's almost no sound there whatsoever, which is a big plus point and a major minus point for many manufacturers who don't think about that. And push it forward, you're ready to fire. Cocking indicator at the back, just underneath uh, the rear bolt shroud, which is exactly where you would expect it to be. Normally the uh, bolt release is on the left hand side of the rifle if you're shooting a right hand rifle. On this one it's on the opposite side. To press that, slide the bolt out. So what do we have here? Very, very simple affair. Most of you who have shot some form of rimfire will be shooting a design pretty similar to this. The one exception, and something that's a little bit unusual, 
especially if you're used to shooting you know, CZs, which is another very popular rimfire, is you don't have a dual extractor on this. We s simply have a single, a very powerful, long and uh, strong looking single extractor on the right hand side of the bolt. Um, so that is what's gripping the rim of uh, your little rimfire case and pulling it back. Recessed along here, you can see where the, the face of the, uh, the case sits. And of course, there's your firing pin there. Very simple, clean, efficient, and uh, this has stood the test of time. I can't see you having any issues with this whatsoever. We've got this nicely uh, milled and chamfered face in here, which has the, the Seiko name in it. Big open port, closed on one side, so it's not fully open, but it's open on top, open on the right hand side, and uh, it throws cases out. You're not going to have any issue with that. Certainly the, the fixed um, ejector system in here and the extractor claw does the job very well indeed. Going from this uh, forward into the, the receiver itself, we can actually see uh, where the barrel comes through the receiver and into uh, the back here where the bolt face actually meets it. A little recess there where the extractor claw pushes in and feeds round the rim of the case. Going to the, the front of the rifle, we can see it's nicely screw cut here with a, a standard thread. Plastic um, thread cover, not really intended um, to be put on the rifle all that often, I don't think. It's not even threaded inside, it's really just a protector. And most people are shooting rim fires with a moderator on all the time. Lastly, before I take the wood away from the metalwork to have a look inside, we just have a look along the top of the rifle, and I've already put a piece of paper down here, and I can see that it's fully floated right up to the receiver. It doesn't sit perfectly central in the stock cover, which is a little bit surprising. I would have thought that it would be um, you know, perfectly symmetrical. Maybe when I disassemble it and put it back together, I might be able to bolt it down straight in line. I'll have a look at that. But the important point is that the stock isn't touching anywhere. You can immediately see here just how strong and robust this rimfire action is. There's a lot more meat on the block here than you would see in a lot of other rifles. We've got a big, fat, flat bottom receiver, which is great to see. It's a, it's a brilliant action for bedding down into the stock. At the front here you can see uh, where the barrel uh, meets the receiver itself and where it slides in. Now this barrel can actually be removed although it is not designed um, to be taken out all the time but if it ever needed to replace it's a, a very simple affair. In the middle we've got the magazine housing which is also made of a plastic material. It's not particularly strong. You can see if I just squeeze it here it moves. However it's encased inside the rifle stock the whole time, so I can't see that uh, being an issue whatsoever. One thing is, it's not going to rust. Behind that, the famous Seiko trigger unit. Um, if I just cock it, you can actually see the engagement in here and where the faces meet and how the rifle breaks. Beautiful and crisp. I should just qualify what I said earlier about uh, being fully adjustable. This is adjustable for sear engagement, um, but you don't actually have any control over um, trigger weight or over travel. Having said that, you don't need it. Uh, this rifle, as it's come right now, I haven't even in, in adjusted any of the engagement, is spot on the money. And lastly, if we just have a look how it fits in the stock itself, slightly surprising that there is no bedding in here at all. Uh, I would have kind of expected that Seiko would have put some form of bedding compound in the front, mainly just because it lends itself so nicely to it. We've got big square edges and a big flat bottom. It would just bed in absolutely beautifully. They haven't done it, however, but what they have done is you can see this recoil block at the back here. So instead of having uh, any kind of recoil surface at the front, all we've got here is the fixing front pin. Uh, which goes through uh, the bottom, or the fr uh, front action screw rather. We have this face just at the back of the trigger uh, mechanism, and this face here mates 
with this really wide recoil pin right at the rear. A little bit unusual to have uh, the recoil surface right at the back of the rifle, but it is a rim fire, so it's not taking a huge amount of punishment. And certainly, how it shot on the range, it seems to work. Um, and certainly, no complaints there. I haven't shot the rifle a huge amount, just done a little bit of hunting with it. Uh, I've taken it on the range, I've probably put uh, two or three boxes of, of 50 through it, and as I expected, and as most 2 2 rifles uh, do these days, it's, it's quite hard to find one that doesn't shoot. Put a variety of ammunition through it, shooting high velocity, shooting low velocity, 50 yards, out to 100 yards, and absolutely nothing to complain about. You'll be able to roll over bunnies with this all day long. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.